Hi, welcome to Social Flow's headquarters here in New York City. I'm Mark White, and I'm here with CEO Jim Anderson, and we're here to talk to you about all the content you see on social media, and specifically, who gets paid. So, take it away, Jim. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. So, we want to talk about different social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. Uh, you know, Facebook is the screenshots I have right here. Where does the content that you're seeing come from? I'm not sure if you've ever sat down and thought about that, but uh, two major categories of content that we look at are professional content and then individual content. Here are just two examples out of my Facebook feed. Professional content, this Financial Times story. Uh, media companies like the Financial Times, Washington Post, New York Times, AOL, Yahoo, whatever media companies you follow produce a tremendous amount of content. And then, of course, contrast that with individual posts. This was one from my feed that I posted when I was with the family out on Ellis Island, a shot back at New York. City. So, key distinction here, professional versus individual content is the first thing we look at. Okay, so content is not created equal. How much content is created from these two very different entities? Absolutely. So, how much content is created? You see professional content, there's a lot less of it than individuals. There's 1.6 billion people on Facebook, a couple hundred million people on Snapchat and Twitter. So, obviously, the individuals are creating a lot more content and when you just look at the number of actual posts. Okay, so of that content, how much do, do I or my friends actually see of those? Right, and so that's this next uh, slide right here is the actual content that's seen. Now all of a sudden it balances out and you've got just as much reach that comes from the professional content as you do from the individual content. Okay, so now we're more balanced. Now, is how about sharing? How much how much engagement? Are we yeah, so the sharing is actually maybe most stark here. When you think about it, the professional content is the content that gets shared. If I post content uh, of my uh, you know trips and my travels to my Facebook feed or my kids, uh, if you and I are friends on Facebook, are you going to share pictures of my kids to your friends? That's a, that's a little odd. But if contrast that, if I post a story about the election, latest poll results, something like that, you're much more likely to share that professional content with your friends. Okay, speaking of professional content. Um, talk a little bit about paid and unpaid. I know you have a kind of a Rubik's Cube-like graph. Yeah, exactly, right here. So a two by two matrix does look a little bit like a Rubik's Cube here. We look at two specific dimensions. Is it unpaid or paid? And so most of the content that shows up in your news feed on Facebook or in your Twitter feed or even in Snapchat is not paid for, right? It's, it's created by me as an individual, you as an individual, or the media companies and just published out there with no money changing hands. That's one dimension. But then there's also the paid dimension, which is advertising, right? I pay to have you see, see content if I'm a, specifically if I'm a marketer. And that's the other dimension we look at here and why we've drawn it as a two by two is the media companies uh, that we talked about that, that create a lot of, of this professional content. Marketers, though, again, you know, your marketers, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's, Unilever, those types of companies produce content as well. So that there's a key to set of distinctions here that we'll go into and, and sort of explain what you're seeing here in this two by two. Okay, so how much of it is actual professional content? Right, so look at the professional content here that's created mostly by media companies unpaid. I mean, they create more content on the professional dimension by far than marketers do because marketers essentially produce advertising and if marketers try to publish their content out into the social feed, it's generally not going to be seen very well. Okay, we always talk about reach, and we talk about it a lot, so right. that's about reach. Right, so uh, that's where the media companies really shine, right? When somebody like the Financial Times, or the New York Times, or the Washington Post, or the Atlantic publishes content out of the feed, it gets a tremendous amount of reach. They do really, really well right here. This is where media companies shine on social networks. Uh, monetization of the content. How does that, who yeah, so, that? well, social networks specifically, so let's go back to Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. Sure. How do they do that monetization? They do phenomenally well, and that money comes from marketers, right? The, the Procter & Gamble's, the McDonald's of the world are paying to advertise, and that's why Facebook is now worth more than General Electric, and Twitter and Snapchat is such a, a popular and up-and-coming social network. They've aggregated these tremendous audiences, and so the audience is absolutely key, but the, the media content that's fueling that is actually uh, coming from the media companies and so what you've got is an adjacency here where you've got the marketers putting their advertisements in the social feeds next to the content coming from the media companies and if you think about it what draws you or me to Facebook or Snapchat or Twitter it's the content coming from the media companies and from our friends that, that pulls us in. Okay so big difference in circles there so talk about how the media companies monetize 
their content. Right, and unfortunately that story is not quite as strong, and that's what we're working on right here. You see how the media companies monetize. That's largely with native advertising. The media companies essentially working with the marketers to create custom content and put it out of the feeds, and they do a great job of that. It's just the magnitude of that is not nearly as high. If we go back to the previous slide and you see what the social networks are doing, the magnitude of what the media companies are able to monetize is not nearly as large. So massive discrepancy between uh, professional and, uh, and indiv indiv individuals, if you like. So how, and also marketers. So how do we, how, how do we equal things out? How, how, how can we help? Well, that's what we do at Social Flow. Is we focus on helping media companies monetize that attention on social networks. And so, in some subsequent episodes uh, of our videos, we're going to talk more about that. In the meantime, we would love to talk with anybody at a media company about how they can better monetize their activity on social. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Jim, and uh, thank you for joining us. Please. Uh, me message us and any questions you have, we'll be happy to get back to you. Thank you very much.